A couple of things before I start. I promise I'll keep to the 10 minutes. Number one. Yeah. Okay. And number two, there'll be smatterings of what I'm going to present to you today that you've already heard throughout the morning. But I just think that further emphasises the importance of the work that we're doing here today. So, good morning all. My name is Ruth. Okay. My QI journey began two years ago when I had the very salubrious opportunity to enjoy and work alongside a number of colleagues that are here in the room today on the Trust QI Fellowship Programme. And then within the last year, as in last year, a privileged opportunity to join the IHI Improvement Programme and become an Improvement Advisor. So this project has been developing over two years, like me, and um, I want to tell you just a wee bit about my story. Okay. The project aim was to increase the percentage of admissions, tr sorry, transfers and discharges from the medical assessment unit before 1 p.m. to 30% by December 2018. Why 30%? All of the evidence and literature out there would say that 30% of your discharges would be able to be discharged before one o'clock. Why? Okay. Charlotte has alluded to this, delighted to see it. So, for me, strategically, the message was very clear for me as a senior manager within the Trust that there was a very clear, clear link between quality improvement and reform. And with the collective leadership strategy coming on board, this was further emphasising the importance of every one of us has an individual responsibility to ensure that quality improvement is well embedded in everything that we do. But for me, in my real job as a nurse, whether it be in unscheduled care. Nobody wants to come into an emergency department and see queues of trolleys waiting, very long waits. The 92-year-old waiting 48 hours plus is soul destroying. But for me, right the way back to the very start of my career as a ward sister, I felt very passionately that this was not the journey or the experience that I wanted for any patient coming into my ward as a ward sister and likewise now as I manage services really wanted to look at different ways of working to improve the patient experience. Okay. Okay. One of the key points to start off any piece of QI work is to get the right people around the table. And over the last two years, I have changed the number of people and the skill mix of the people around the table, and I think that has kept the project very fresh. My experience has clearly shown that you get the right people around the table, anything is achievable. So you want to invite, as always, some of the usual suspects and some of the more unusual suspects. And I think you've really created um, an expert team. When you look round your table and you look at some of the, the, the staff and say, she wouldn't normally be first in the queue or stick her hand up to do something, and all of a sudden she's moved from a spectator to a team member. She's moved from someone who normally works in isolation to now be included in the work. You've invited to the group someone who normally says, there's not a chance that's going to work, and I'm not doing it, to let's give it a try. So I think the final part about setting your team up as well is to remember the fact that this is not a hierarchy, this is equal partnership. Okay, one of the first activities that we did um, was we had two affinity workshops, tremendous opportunity to generate your change ideas um, and that was from a multidisciplinary approach. Okay. Now you'll see from the start of that slide we developed 47 change ideas and you'll be glad to know I'm not going to go through them all. Okay. So here are the, some of the change ideas um, and particularly the top two were the most important for me. What I wanted to do was to utilise every available opportunity for a conversation to be had with regards to discharge planning. So we reviewed the daily medical review and we combined it with a whole refresh of our nurse facilitated discharge policy. And very, very quickly, we got very, very quick wins, and all of a sudden, nurses at ward level could see the successes 
um, that were coming to the patient's journey and were embracing the fact that they actually had more autonomy in terms of improving the patient experience. Some of the things that previous presenters alluded to, we blew the myth out of the water that in our trust, um, blood results take six hours to come back. You know the old saying, what are they waiting on? They're waiting on their bloods to come back. Not at all. What we did was we identified someone to take the early morning bloods at 7 a.m. in the morning, and hey-ho, they were back by half past eight, all ready for the ward round. That really impressed the medical staff because they could make live decisions fully informed decisions at the time of the ward round. Ward rounds were an in interesting experience for me, for someone who hadn't done one for a very long time. And all of a sudden, here I was shadowing four different consultants who did the ward round in four different ways. But over the two year programme, like the previous presenter, we have <coughs> changed some of the methods um, on how they work, they operate. So it is about seeing the sick and the quick um, seeing the sick, obviously, for clinical priority, but seeing the quick because they just need the big doctor to give it the big OK. okay. I'm keeping the time. OK. Um, a huge success last year was within the trust we developed a discharge lounge. Um, and the medical assessment unit and the discharge lounge worked very closely together in absolute harmony and what that means for the patient is when they're in the medical assessment unit they can come in they have their breakfast on a particular morning if it's their day of discharge then they transfer down to the discharge lounge where there is a pharmacist there and a doctor who writes their script in a nice calm controlled environment and the discharge then is is followed through from the discharge lounge Total, totally enhanced the service um, in, in a combined way. And more recently, some of our improvement ideas have been working around our specialty hubs, with particular uh, reference to respiratory hubs, GI hubs, and neurology. And what this actually means for the patient is, when they're currently in MAU, they can be referred to the specialty hub. Doesn't necessarily mean that they'll get a discharge from the hub, but they're getting that specialist opinion early. They may well come back to MAU or they may well be discharged from the hub and then even followed up by the hub in the next couple of days. Again, giving patients a first class service. More recently, um, in the last three or four months, um, I have been challenged and asked to scale up and spread um, the project. And that actually has been quite a, an exciting opportunity, but at the same time, it's a little daunting. So we've, we've, we've working alongside five other pilot wards. It is very early days, but at the same time, very interesting to see how they have adopted many of the challenges and turned them into change ideas in different ways to what we have done within the medical assessment unit. Um, more recently, our pool processes, um, and where we're working alongside one of those wards in particular, and that's more about focusing about getting the right patient to the right bed at the right time, and again, improving the patient's journey. I'm glad Lynn's not here. Okay. So I got quite bare chart, but you know what? It shows it in perfect pictorial fashion. It is normal variation, yes. But what it actually says for me is my baseline was 7% of discharges were out before one o'clock when I started the project in 2017. At the end of 2018, I achieved my goal and our discharges are now sitting at 31%. Another nice interesting chart for me is, and it depicts the partnership working with the transition ward and the discharge lounge, that when we, you look at transfers on their own, because patients are transferred to the discharge lounge, not discharged to it, um, it shows that in 2017, or when it, it was just about to open, we were sitting about 3% of our patients are transferred out before one o'clock. And now at the end of 2018, 66% of our patients are transferred out of MAU before one o'clock. So one reflection, what has made this project a success 
for the staff. And I think there are a number of key things, um, but for me, it has been about over this two year pathway, about hitting the refresh button regularly. And what I mean by about that is that we have involved different members of staff with different change ideas, so it hasn't always been the same people around the table. And that has allowed the project to stay alive and current, and dare I say it, we do have fun doing it. The culture within the ward, the ward staff now see that they are making things better. They are making the journey better for the patient, but also they're making the workload better for staff within the ward because the bulk of their patients are out in the morning time and they're not going into an evening facing with six or eight empty beds. The provision of um, the data on a very regular basis, we produce our data on a weekly basis, um, so it keeps the team focused in on their goals and they can clearly see the improvements that they're making and I don't know about your staff but my staff within MAU are very very competitive so they like to see an improvement on a very regular basis and they really challenge themselves if they have a dip in performance for whatever reason. Staff tell me now that they feel emp empowered and they are making a genuine difference. And we've spent a lot of time over the past two years in developing some of their knowledge, their knowledge in terms of um, QI techniques. A wee point I missed in one of the previous slides was about speaking the patient language. And I feel very, very strongly about the value of patient stories. So one of our change ideas included about what does the patient know about... Um, I'll see if I go back. What does the patient know about um, what does the patient know about their discharge process? So we spent a lot of time taking some stories, and um, we found out, as Charlotte had said earlier on this morning, we as nurses and medical colleagues talk a lot in acronyms. So the, the doctor would stand, you know, halfway down the bed, speaking to the patient, and would talk about EDDs and things like that. And uh, the doctor would continue on in his ward round, and I then would stop and take a a wee bit of time spent uh, time talking to the patient and listening to their story and they had no idea what an EDD was about. So we've stopped using that type of language within MAU and now we talk to patients about this is your journey, your treatment plan will continue but the plan is for discharge home tomorrow with an expectation that you'll be home early in the day. Success factors for me, got to be honest, you can't fake it. I am not an expert in this, but I am on a QI journey that I am thoroughly enjoying. Um, and I think that has been tremendously good for me personally and professionally. Um, you need to walk the walk um, and that will help you understand the system that you're in and to make your QI improvements. Anything that I have described in my slide today is not rocket science. It's simple, but at the same time meets the strategic agenda. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Whether that be in documentation, verbal handovers, e-whiteboards, huddles, so that everybody knows what's going on within the patient journey. Keep your QI information live and displayed at ward level. And for me, I'm happy to say that my next step in this journey for me is about developing a QI drop-in session on a Friday between one and two. And I want to open this up to the wider director within which I work. And the plan really, or the aims for that one hour long session, is not only to share with staff some of the QI knowledge that I have, but listen to some of their ideas for change. 
to support other QI projects that are going on within um, the directorate, particularly our, our own SQE projects. And I, what I hope to get out of that is linking my skills of QI and coaching techniques and helping to support staff. And what I'm saying to them as I'm encouraging them to attend is, I promise you, you will not leave the room. If you have a good idea of an improvement or a change to be made, you will not leave the room without a QI mentor. Almost there. Okay. Throughout the two years, I believe that I have stayed humble in all of this process because I recognise that the success of this project has not necessarily been as a direct result of anything I have done or said, but it is a direct result of the team. And I would like to acknowledge their dedication, commitment and resilience to making things better in terms of patient safety, quality and experience within MAU. And my one last slide is not a QI guru, but someone who I actually respect well for his values and beliefs. And Bear Grylls, I don't know whether you can say that or not, says, a wise, a wise man knows, learns from others, never gets complacent, and knows where the classic old dangers come from. Thank you.